She's nine years old, and I've known her for a couple years. She's tenacious and determined and adorable. I've grown to really admire her, even though she's about 20 years younger than I am. Her dream is to be the first female president. Now I want you to all close your eyes for a moment, really close them, and imagine this little friend of mine. What does the future first female president look like and sound like to you? Picture her, close your eyes. Okay, now you can open them. This is Angel, this is my little friend. Today I'm going to tell you Angel's story because I believe that sharing stories has the power to really change our world. I found myself in Angel's dusty, sewage-filled Ugandan slum, inspired by this young girl. She's been raised moving from slum to slum in Kampala, Uganda. Her family couldn't even afford to send her to the first grade. But her dream is to be Uganda's first female president. Do y'all think it's possible? I do. I met Angel and her choir mates in Uganda. You see, my dream was always to be a journalist. I took every opportunity I could growing up to become one. And after graduating from the University of Virginia, I landed my dream job at CNN. I worked long hours at CNN covering news and politics and was blessed by amazing mentors, some of who are here today and I get to share the stage with. Um, but I had a fire burning inside my heart, wanting to tell more stories that I thought made a difference, and more stories that there wasn't airtime for. The time for that seemed few and far between, until one of my friends asked me to make a video for her nonprofit. So I took a month off to go on this adventure to Uganda, and what ended up happening changed my life. My first day there, I met the African Children's Choir. The kids I met in the choir were mostly orphans and street kids. Their parents had died of AIDS, malaria, or just from living in extreme poverty. The kids who did have parents also had six or seven siblings, and their families simply could not afford to feed, clothe, house, and educate all of them. Public education in Uganda is not free, so while their parents work so hard, they struggle to make ends meet, and the cycle of poverty is perpetuated. The kids I met had dirty, swollen, bare feet, but there was a sparkle in their eyes and inspiration in their toothless smiles. They had so much hope and dignity and beauty. Their belief in their own unlimited potential turned my world upside down in the best way. They had big hopes and ambitious dreams and their faith poured into my own. So I took a leap of faith and decided to help share their story with the world. I felt like after spending years of seeing the Western media and nonprofits dehumanize the poor by just making them seem like they didn't have dignity to raise more money for their causes or to sell ad time. I was really into how the choir did the exact opposite and succeeded at giving these kids dignity and showing their beauty and showing the good that was happening in Africa instead of all the bad that we were seeing on the news. Thanks to this organization, the African Children's Choir, these children were going to tour the world singing, dancing, and drumming. And all the money they raised on tour would pay for their education through college. The choir has been around for almost 30 years now, and former choir members are human rights attorneys, HIV AIDS doctors, TV news anchors, engineers, teachers, flight attendants, all lifting their communities up on their own. I wanted to help them tell their story. Our film is called Emba Mean Sing because Emba means sing in Swahili and Luganda, the languages that each of these kids speak. The choir actually started in Uganda almost 30 years ago during a civil war. A humanitarian aid worker that was there at the time saw that despite the desolate circumstances, these kids were full of beauty, and he wanted to bring them to the West to show that to the world. So I wanted to jump on board and help share their story. After spending two years with these kids, they have completely reinvented my career. Instead of seeing poor kids in a faraway slum, I see children whose story I really know and I really want to share. I see friends and people who I believe can achieve their dreams and make a difference. Instead of throwing dollar bills at these kids as if they were problems, these kids make me happier than I've ever been in my life. By Western standards, these children have nothing to be happy about. They don't have books or toys or even clean water, but they're full of more joy, love, and laughter than anyone I've ever met. So we've all seen the infomercials of kids with um, 
their dis distended belly is kind of sick like I am right now from coming from Africa, and flies on empty tin pans because they're starving. Normally you would see Angel on an infomercial like that, begging for food. But the truth is, Angel does have food to eat. She gets it for herself and her family by singing. Someone invented charity infomercials. They raise more money for the organizations airing them than for people like Angel and her family. So I'm trying to reinvent that by sharing her story. We've been filming the choir for two years, from being selected in their slum in Uganda, all the way to singing on a red carpet at a star-studded show in New York City, from singing on the snowy mountaintops of Canada to singing for the Boys and Girls Club and teaching them African drumming and dance, from singing the national anthem at an Atlanta Braves baseball game to recording an album last month at the Beatles' Abbey Road studio in London. <laughs> And we returned to Uganda with these children. I had no idea what to expect, seeing them experience their circumstances for the first time in almost two years. After living in mansions and having swimming pools with diving boards and so many toys and so much food, would they be ashamed of where they came from? I tried to have no expectations, but I honestly thought it was gonna be heartbreaking. What ended up happening, once again, reinvented me. And again, these kids changed my life. They had bigger smiles on their faces when they saw their families in their little mud hut and their tin roof slum than when they were at Disney World. They were full of more joy and more pride hugging their parents and their, the people that watch over them than when they shared the stage with celebrity role models of theirs. It completely shocked me and it made me like lose all of my professionalism and trying to want to be this filmmaker and I just cried and bawled with bliss. So I've been trying to think of a way to explain to all of you how important storytelling is and how important it is for us to share our stories and to listen and really hear other people's. Perhaps Oprah said it best. At the end of her very last show, she told the audience, every person you will ever meet shares a common desire. They want to know, did you see me? Do you hear me? Does what I say mean anything to you? Well, y'all, we should always strive to answer yes. And making this film is my way of at least saying yes to Angel, that I do hear her, I do see her, and I do believe that she can be a president. Angel and her choir mates are now in a world-class school on the majestic shores of Lake Victoria, and their education will be funded through college. If I had any money left after making this film, I would put it on Angel becoming Uganda's first female president. What I'm doing isn't special or extraordinary. I just took a leap of faith. I'm a normal girl with a dream. We can all chase our dreams. There are refugees in our own community and homeless moms working so hard to get their children off the streets. Instead of just throwing money at them and a blank check like they're a problem, get to know them and their story. I promise that in the video that was supposed to show, Angel said abracadabra. And abracadabra, it'll reinvent the world around you. Thank you.